Hello and welcome back to another Doctor Who action figure review. Today I'm taking a look at the final B&M exclusive pack for 2021, which is the K1 Robot and 4th Doctor set from Robot. It's a great set, it's going to make people who missed out on that original collect and build K1 Robot incredibly happy. Let's begin, as ever, by taking a look at the packaging. So the figures are packaged in a window box, a slightly new style window box because of the size of the K1 robot. And it has the familiar style guide that we're used to with the other sets. We have the Doctor Who logo, this time stacked with the grey and blue TARDIS on the side. And of course we have our gold foil limited edition sticker and the story and year that these figures are from. On the back of the box we get a look at the figures inside, as well as a synopsis about the story Robot, which is Tom Baker's first story. And as ever we are treated to a diorama backdrop, this time it's the inside of Professor Kettlewell's laboratory, where the fourth Doctor and the K1 robot first face off. And as always these look great with your figures posed inside. So out of the box, the figures look fantastic. These are brand new refreshes of two existing figures. Like I was saying earlier, you've got the K1 robot, which was originally a collect and build figure or a builder figure. And then we have the fourth Doctor, which was also from that very first wave of classic figures. So we're going to start off talking about the main centerpiece of this set, which is, of course, the K1 robot, who looks amazing. And you might be thinking, well, what's so different about this K1 robot? Well, quite a lot, actually. So first of all, the whole silver paint job is now in that new metallic silver that we've seen used from the Dead Planet Daleks onwards. And it looks brilliant here. The other major difference is the colour of the lens around the head and the stripes on the shoulders. Now on the original version, as you can see here, it was red. It was a flat red as well on the shoulders. This time around, they've used a far more pink issue for the dome and for the stripes on the shoulders, which are also in a metallic finish. And that looks far more accurate to what we see on screen. Alongside that, there's a few other differences. We have dark mesh now all around the mouth and beneath it. Something else that I'm really pleased to see is the change of finish around the neck brace section or the collar. On the original, that was just plain silver. Here, however, they've painted it a matte gray which is exactly how it looks in the series. So they've done a really good job of just tweaking it ever so slightly to make it far more accurate to what we see on screen. Everything else in terms of the details is pretty much the same. We have the nuts and bolts on the front, we have the tubing, all made of translucent rubber, which looks fantastic. The same goes around the back, we have the pipes, we have that large translucent piece, and we have all more of these knobs and switches on the back. What is interesting, however, is that there has been a swap on the left hand side compared to the original release. Now, I don't know if that is because that's more accurate with this new version, or perhaps they just put mine together slightly wrong. Who knows? I'll have a look and see if I can find out. Now, there are a few tooling differences with this version of the figure, which came as quite a surprise. First of all, the hands. Now, in the box, you wouldn't notice this, and it took me ages to notice this myself because I'm just blind. The K1 Robot's left hand, that he's not carrying the gun in, is the same large, thick claw hands that we saw on the original version. If we move over to his right hand, the hand carrying the gun, it is a much thinner claw, which is brand new. So this is more accurate to what we see in the episode. I guess he needed something much smaller and lighter to be able to carry the gun around. Another interesting difference is that the figure now has a load of legal gubbins on his bum, which wasn't there before. I'm assuming this is because this is being sold as a figure rather than a series of accessories. I could be completely wrong, but interesting nonetheless that that's also been changed. Something that I will say, and I'll mention it a bit more when we go into the articulation in a moment, is he doesn't stand as well as the original one. A lot of the joints on this guy feel far looser than the original collect and build version. Now, I'm not sure why that would be. I don't know if it's something to do with the tooling or how it's been constructed compared to the original, but particularly around the waist area, it is very, very wobbly and it can be quite tricky to balance him standing up straight. He also comes with an accessory, which is, of course, the disintegrator gun. This has been really well sculpted, just like the original. There's a lot of detail here with the details around the barrel, 
the little like hood ornament type thing on top and even the little dial and switches around the side. So this is really cool and it just clips into the pincer of his hand really easily. Another thing that is worth mentioning, which is a vast improvement over the original figure, is that the paint job on the claws doesn't have that same flaking problem like the original did. If you remember, the original one was prone to having the paint flake around the thinner parts of the wrists because just the nature of the paint I guess and the nature of the material used for the wrists themselves that rubber here that doesn't seem to be a problem it seems like they fixed that so that is a vast improvement which is really great to see we have articulation at the head again it's hindered slightly because he's got this mouthpiece which sort of rubs against the neck brace obviously you don't want to rub the paint off so you can turn it ever so slightly it's probably about as much movement as Michael Kilgariff had in the actual suit the arms uh, you have articulation at the shoulders here, so they go back and forth like so, uh, but then you also have this elbow joint, well, if you call it an elbow joint it's all a bit hard to say really, but yeah that's like your elbow joint there, so this is all articulated, very loose joints here, far looser than the original version, and then you've got articulation at the wrists here, so you can turn those all around, a bit stiff, but you can move them, which is great. And of course we have articulation at the waist here. Again, this is very floppy. Look at that. Ooh, drunk Kilgariff. Um, again, probably about as stable as Michael Kilgariff was in the actual suit. Then we have articulation down at the hips. So these can move forward ever so slightly and back ever so slightly. And these can also twist all the way around 360 degrees should you wish to do that. Then we move down to the ankles. They can't really move up and down. You can't pivot them back and forth really, but they can twist side to side should you wish to do that but instead of having pivoting ankles we have the toes which can be pushed upwards like that so that will allow you to have him in more of a, a walking pose should you wish to do that um like i said he's a bit wobbly on his feet so he doesn't stand particularly well but you can just about balance him out in such a way that you can um get him to look like he's on the march a bit drunk but it works. Then of course we move on to the fourth Doctor, which again is a repaint of the original figure that came out way back in 2008. This time with a different head, the solemn hatted head that we first saw with the Seeds of Doom figure. And much like with the K1 robot, this is a much improved version of what we had originally. And the original one was great, but this one just takes it one step further in terms of accuracy. So starting with the head sculpt, well, it's the same head that we saw with the Seeds of Doom version, this time with the hat painted brown, much like his season 12 hat. Where things get interesting is of course the rest of the costume. So the scarf is exactly the same pattern as that original figure. It doesn't have the dirty wash over it and the type of rubber used is slightly tougher than the original version. So it's a bit more stiff to move. But then we get to the rest of the costume where things really start to get interesting. So the jacket is now a much brighter red. Everything has been molded in this much brighter red. The PVC, the arms, and it looks much better for it. When you compare it to that original figure, which like I said, it was great. It just looks a little bit more accurate. So I really love that they've brightened up the fourth Doctor's coat. There's some other colour differences, you know, the colour for the elbow patches and the bit of trim around the pockets. That's now a different colour. And also all of the buttons have paint apps. These have been finished in a sort of goldish copper colour, which looks great. They really pop around the cuffs. But for me, the thing that I really love is the new style cravat. Whereas the original one was sort of a teal colour, this is a much closer green and they finally added all of the pattern onto it. And it just really adds something to this figure. It really just finishes it off in a way that was missing on the original. He doesn't have the checked print on his shirt anymore like he does in the show, but with all the other details going on with the tie and the waistcoat, you don't really miss it. And moving down to that waistcoat, well, cardigan, is, that's what he's actually wearing, you can see they've also updated the paint apps on that as well. And then moving down to the trousers, they've used the same technique as they did with the Terror of the Zygons Tom Baker, which is giving it that speckled effect, which looks far closer to what we see in the show. I'm really pleased that they've added this to this figure because it was so successful on that Terror of the Zygons version and it just works brilliantly here. So if you don't have a season 12 fourth Doctor in your collection, you're gonna really wanna get this one because this is without doubt the definitive version even more so than that original one. And the head is removable still, so if you do want to swap heads with a smiling hatted Tom, or, you know, the solemn hatless head, 
you can still do that. There are lots of options with this guy. He doesn't come with his sonic screwdriver, but I'm sure you'll all have plenty of those kicking around from previous Fourth Doctor releases. So in terms of articulation for the Fourth Doctor, it's the standard articulation for those early classic figures. Articulation at the neck. Uh, he hasn't got an awful lot of movement because of the scarf, but of course, because the head is on a peg and the head is detachable, it does allow you to give it a bit more movement so you can, you know, pose it looking up, for instance, and just move it away from the scarf so you can turn the head a little bit more. Then, of course, you have articulation at the shoulders that go 360 degrees, at the biceps, at the elbows, and, of course, at the wrists. Articulation at the waist, down at the hips, it's a T crotch joint, so they move forward and out to the sides, and then articulation down at the thigh, which also do 360s, and then of course pivots at the knees as well. So that was the robot set, the final release from B&M for 2021. A great set, we've done incredibly well this year with such a range of different figures from 60s monsters and companions, 80s monsters, it's been absolutely fantastic. So. Thank you to Character Options for sending these figures over so that I could review them. Thank you all for watching these reviews. I hope you're able to go hunting and get hold of these sets. Like I said, this one is really great. If you've got the original K1 robot and the original Tom, I would definitely suggest getting hold of this set regardless because it is such an improvement on what has gotten before. So thank you all for watching and I'll see you all again in the new year for some more Doctor Who action figure reviews. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.